morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we've come together as a body of believers to rejoice. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we've come to give you glory on this morning. We come to praise your holy and your righteous name because you've been so good and you've been so kind and you've been so loving and you've been so merciful and you've been so forgiving. You've been our way maker. Oh, Father God, we come this morning just to give you praise because you're a loving God. You are forgiving God. Father God, we love you on this morning. We come to lift up your holy and your righteous name because there's none other like you. No one can love us like you do. No one can do us like you do. So, Father God, we love and depend on you. And if you love him on this morning, if he has done anything for you on this morning, just we lift up our hands and we give you glory. You've kept us all week long. Father God, you've covered our bodies, Lord God. You kept our families intact, Lord God. Father God, you kept our children safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. And for that, we give you thanks. Father God, you've healed our bodies, Lord God. You've touched our minds, Lord God. Oh God, you gave us mercy and grace, Lord God. Brand new mercies we saw on this morning. You allowed us to rise on today, Lord God, with you on our minds, Lord God. We pressed our way to the house of God on today, Lord God, just to give you glory. Father God, we love you and we bless you. If he's done anything for you, if he's healed your body, give him praise. Give him praise. That's what we've come to do is to give him praise. We put aside every distraction. We've come to lift up your name in praise because you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And for that, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We reverence you. I don't know about you, but I've got good reports on this week. I'm telling you, the Lord is a healer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he might not have healed your body, but he healed your finances. Give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. 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 Our call to worship, hallelujah, is coming from Psalm 34 on this morning. Psalm 34, starting at verse 1, and we, I'm going to conclude at verse 10. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see. I said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Huh, oh, taste and see 
that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to them who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Hallelujah. 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 The psalm starts off with, with saying, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So let's do that. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's bless his holy and his righteous name. Hallelujah. 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 On behalf of our pastor, Bishop Durant Kevin Harvin III, and our co-pastor, Lisa Harvin, we welcome you to the gift. Those here in the sanctuary and those who are viewing from online, we welcome you. Who are, those who are uh, with us virtually to the Great Emmanuel Faith Temple. The gift is a committed community of believers ignited by God's word. We radiate the light of Jesus Christ, the Lord, and live with irresistible joy. We pray you enjoy the worship experience with us today. We know it's not by happenstance that you are here with us today. A little later in the service, we will offer you Christ and extend the opportunity to become a gift citizen. It would be our honor to walk with you, love on you, and help you grow in your walk with Christ. If you already have a church home, I would ask that you would extend our greetings to your church family and your pastor. Now, I ask you to do me a favor to share this broadcast on all your social media platforms. Like it, share it, invite. However that you uh, deal with your friends on social media, let them know that the gift is on and it'll, it, it's going to be a wonderful word that they can take and apply it to their daily living on this morning. So I ask you to share and on our YouTube channel as well. Help us to take the good news of the gospel to the world. Thank you. And again, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the gift. We're glad you're here. 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 I'm glad you're here. We're 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 glad you're here. Let that message be abundantly clear. We're glad you're here. Now don't forget to subscribe to our GIFT YouTube channel, The GIFT Video. And stream with us every time we go live and one day be with us in person and make The GIFT your home. Remember, 
We're glad you're here. Good morning. I am Minister Kevin Underdo, and I will be bringing forth prayer of thanksgiving and intercession. Can we all posture ourselves for prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you on this day to say thank you, God. But not just our normal average thank you oh god but saying it from my chest on this morning oh god because we did not have to be here on this day lord god you chose to wake us up on this morning father giving us another opportunity lord god to bask in your glory again lord god so we say thank you god for being here on this day god thank you god for letting our feet touch the ground Thank you, God, for the activities the activities of our limbs. Thank you, God, for clothing us in our right mind, oh God. Thank you, God, for blood still pumping through our heart, Lord God. Thank you, God, for our nervous system, Lord God, still working properly, Lord God. Thank you, God, for still having purpose in our life, Lord God. Thank you, God, for still having a roof over our head. Thank you, God, for having garments to put over our back. Thank you, God, for even that simple cup of coffee that we drank before we got here on this morning. Because none of those things, oh God, were owed to us or promised to us, oh God. But we thank you on this day, Lord God, that you've given us so much already, Lord God. In the few hours that we've been arrived on this day, Lord God, that you've given us so much, oh God. And haven't asked much in return, oh God. So we thank you, God, for us being here on this day, Lord God. Father, I come to you right now, Lord God, as your son, oh God, as your manservant, oh God. I ask you right now, Lord God, that you touch, Lord God, each and every person, oh God, at the sound of my voice, Lord God. Whether they're here in the sanctuary, Lord God, or they can hear my voice over the airways, oh God. God, I pray right now, Lord God, that whatever is going on in their lives, oh God, that they cast all their cares onto you, Father. Father, we come to you right now, Lord God. Know that there are some here, Lord God, with heavy hearts, Lord God, who are dealing, Lord God, with struggles, oh God, who are dealing with iniquities, oh God, who are dealing with things in their life, Lord God, they just don't know how to make it, Lord God. So I pray right now, Lord God, that before, Lord God, they make that final decision, Lord God, of what to do, Lord God, they cast all the cares onto you, Lord God. Father, I come to you right now, Lord God, standing in the gap, Lord God, for those, oh God, who may not be strong enough, Lord God, to go on another day, Lord God. I ask you right now, Lord God, that you reach us, Lord God, that you touch us, Lord God, from the crown of our head, Lord God, to the sole of our feet, Lord God, feet, Lord God, to be able, Lord God, to hear your voice on the day, Lord God. God, I pray right now, Lord God, that you speak to us, Lord God, clearly, Lord God, that we understand, Lord God, what is it that says, thus saith the Lord, Lord God. God, I thank you right now, Lord God, for us having a place called the gift, Lord God, that we can worship at, Lord God. God, to know, Lord God, that we may not be the biggest, Lord God, in size, Lord God, but our spirit, Lord God, is infinite, Lord God. Your spirit is infinite, Lord God, that you can reach, Lord God, those, Lord God, who are not even in the building, Lord God. You can reach those, Lord God, who need to be connected to someone, Lord God. So I thank you right now, Lord God, for your infancy, Lord God, to be able to touch and reach those, Lord God, who need you the most, Lord God. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, that you've given us a set man and a set woman of this house, Lord God, that lays prostrate for us day in and day out, Lord God. Even, Lord God, at the moments, Lord God, we don't deserve it, that they still allow them, Lord God, to pray and intercede for us, Lord God. God, I thank you right now, Lord God, that you continue, oh God, to speak to them in a manner, Lord God, that leads and directs us, oh God. God, I pray right now, Lord God, that we continue, oh God, to live off of kingdom principles, oh God, the way that we treat one another, Lord God, and treat your people, Lord God, that be exemplary, Lord God, of what you stand for, Lord God. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, that you are able, Lord God, to give us another opportunity, Lord God, to get it right, Lord God. I pray right now, Lord God, that you forgive us, Lord God. And Lord, allow us to forgive ourselves, Lord God. Allow us, Lord God, in this season, Lord God, to walk in unconditional forgiveness, Lord God. 
being forgiven, oh God, for our transgressions, oh God, but forgiving those who oh God who have sinned against us, Lord God. Father, I ask you right now, Lord God, that we stand true to your word, Lord God, just to know, Lord God, that it stands, oh God, it never comes back or void again, Lord God. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, that you allow us, oh God, to just bask in your presence on this day, Lord God. God, I thank you right now, Lord God, for the word that's coming forth on this day, Lord God, that the woman of God that's coming forth, Lord God, will pierce the heart of those who hear the word, and it be life-changing, oh God, and applicable to every situation, oh God, from the, the, the most infant ears, oh God, to the eldest person, oh God. God allow us, oh God, to hear that word, Lord God, and dissect it, Lord God, for the, whatever situation that our life calls for on this day, Lord God. God, I thank you right now, Lord God, for signs and wonders that's going to come forth, Lord God, on this day, Lord God. God, I thank you right now, Lord God, for the healing that is already taking place, Lord God, for the healing, Lord God, that's already taking place, Lord God. And God, I thank you in advance, Lord God, that for the healing that's going to take place, Lord God, from this point, Lord God, and forevermore, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, with the expectation, oh God, of you doing amazing things, oh God, in this house, oh God, individually and collectively, oh God. Father, we come to you right now, Lord God, lifting up those lames, oh God, on our prayer list, oh God. We ask you right now, Lord God, that you continue, oh God, to cover Mother Loretta Bond, Lord God. Touch her body, Lord God. Let the report of the doctor, Lord God, be in her favor, Lord God, but better yet in your favor, Lord God. Father God, I pray right now, Lord God, for Mama Lucy Armstrong, Lord God, have your way, God, in her life, Lord God, for to know, Lord God, that she is a woman after your own heart, Lord God. So touch her, Lord God, and allow those around her, Lord God, to impart, Lord God, wealth of knowledge, health, and wisdom into her life, Lord God. God, we ask you right now, Lord God, that you cover, Lord God, Sister Joyce, Joyce Turner Brewer, Lord God, continue to have your way in her life, Lord God. Touch her mind, Lord God. Be a peace in her mind right now, Lord God. For the things that the enemy is trying to attack her on, Lord God, we rebuke it right now, Lord God, in the strong name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, for Brother Virgil Davis, Lord God, having a successful, Lord God, procedure, Lord God, on April 1st, Lord God. God, continue, oh God, to cover Sister Gail Brown, Lord God. We thank you right now. We God, we thank you right now, Lord God. For the kidney, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, that you did not have to do it, Lord God, but you done it, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, that was once said a no, Lord God, that you turned it into a yes, Lord God. So we thank you on this day, Lord God, that the kidney functions, Lord God, will work, Lord God, if there be no complications in it, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, for every person that's prayed for that kidney, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, for her children, Lord God, being able to continue to enjoy the presence of their mother, Lord God. We ask you right now, Lord God, during the healing process, Lord God, that you touch, Lord God, from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet, Lord God, that it be a manifestation of the promise of your word, Lord God, that may not come back a void, Lord God. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, for Pastor Lamont and Lady Debbie Baker, Lord God, for healing, Lord God, and, and miracles in their life, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, that you continue, we pray for Bishop Patricio and Lady Mia Wilson, oh God, from the transition, oh God, of their beloved father on yesterday, Lord God. Father, we pray right now continuously, oh God, for our pastor's mother, Lord God. Reverend Pastor Cynthia Harvin, oh God, touch her body, Lord God. We ask you right now, Lord God, that you do signs and wonders for her, Lord God. But as we pray for her, Lord God, we pray for her son, oh God. We pray for her daughter, Lord God. We pray for her grandchildren, oh God, to know, Lord God, that your way, Lord God, will be done in their lives, oh God. Father, we pray right now, Lord God, for Bishop Troy Anthony Bronner, Lord God, for a successful kidney transplant, Lord God. Wow, God, you do it in, in numbers, oh God, that says two, Lord God. So we thank you that you are still in the midst, Lord God. God, we pray right now, Lord God, for Reverend Julie Holly, Lord God, for her healing and provision, Lord God. And God, we pray right now, Lord God, for 100%, Lord God, fulfillment, Lord God, on the Secure the Gift campaign, Lord God. God, we know, Lord God, that you want a place, Lord God, 
that your people can dwell at, Lord God. That your people can be restored in, Lord God. That your people can be healed at, Lord God. So, Father, even beyond just the sanctuary, Lord God, we pray, in, Lord God, that it's done, Lord God, for this house, Lord God, to do the things that you need us to do, Lord God, for your people, Lord God. To do it, Lord God, in the, with a humble spirit, Lord God. To elevate your kingdom, Lord God. To bring forth, Lord God, families, Lord God, and ministry, Lord God. And we need a place, oh God, that we can come at, Lord God, and break bread, oh God, and celebrate, Lord God, the goodness of the Lord, Lord God, for the testimonies that are going to come forth, Lord God, for the healing that's going to be manifested, oh God, on that ground, even the community, oh God, that's going to be touched, oh God, by the presence, oh God, of the greater Emmanuel Faith Temple, Lord God. So I come to you right now, Lord God asking you, Lord God, as humbly as I know how, Lord God, that you seal this prayer, Lord God, that you bless this prayer, Lord God, that you take Kevin out of the equation, Lord God, and Holy Spirit, that you step in and do what only you can do, Lord God. You've never felt this, Lord God. We felt ourselves, God. We felt you, Lord God, but you've never felt this, Lord God. So we stand strong on your word, Lord God, that it is so. It's in Christ Jesus' precious name that I pray. In faith, in decree. Amen. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. You're going to do it, God. I believe you're going to do it for us, God. I believe, God, that you're going to make a way out of no way, God. I believe, Lord God, with what you've called this ministry to be, Lord God, for your people, Lord God. God, I believe, Lord God, the signs and wonders will come out of this place, oh God. God, I pray, Lord God, that you hear our voice on this day, God. God, we come to you, Lord God. Your people, Lord God. You know that we need this, Lord God. This is not a want, Lord God. This is a need, Lord God. We need this, Lord God, like we need the air that we breathe, Lord God. We need this, Lord God, like the food that we eat, Lord God. We need this, Lord God, like we need you, God. So have your way, God. God, to know, Lord God, is going to take money, Lord God. But beyond the money, it's going to take faith, Lord God. It's going to take faith, Lord God. To know the work that's going to be done, oh God. It's going to take faith, Lord God, for us to build a place, Lord God. To do something different, Lord God, that's never been done before, Lord God. It's going to take faith, Lord God, to hold up the man and woman of God, arms, oh God, in this season, oh God. When things may not look like what we want them to be, Lord God. So I ask you right now, Lord God, that you search every person in this room right now, Lord God. For the measure of faith, Lord God. Your word says, if we have the faith of a mustard seed, Lord God, that we can move mountains, oh God. And a mustard seed, God, is so finite, Lord God. So I know our faith is stronger, Lord God, and bigger than that, Lord God. So we come, Lord God, to move this mountain out of our way. We stand and declare it in the strong name of Jesus. That this mountain be moved for the gift. Have your way. God, in this place, on this day, in the name of Jesus, that you be glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. I will be bringing forth the scripture lesson on this morning. We'll be reading Ephesians 1, verses 9. Through 12, my apologies. Once again, Ephesians 1, verses 9 through 12. And the word of the Lord reads, God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan at the right, my God, at the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and everything on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. 
for he chose us in advance, my God, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. God's purpose was that the Jews who were in first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. Thus says the reading of the Lord's word. I will be bringing forth uh, the declaration of paying tithes and offering on this morning. Oops, sorry. That's not me. That's someone else. So my apologies. <laughs> Please be blessed. Morning, Gift Nation. How are you this morning? Other than the word, this is one of the best times uh, of the service because we get to give back to God all that he's given to us. Now, we can't give him back all that he's given. We can give him a portion of what he's given to us. So we should be excited because we get to do for God. And he's done so much for us. Hello. This morning, I would like to share my tithing testimony with you. However, before I share my testimony, let's take a look at scripture that guides us as we give. Go with me to Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. And let me go back a little bit and let me introduce myself. myself my name is Reverend Shelley Duke Strain. I was so excited, got all about that. Proverbs, chapter three, verses five through six. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Now the New American Standard Bible, Proverbs nineteen twenty one says, Many plans are in a person's heart, but the advice of the Lord will stand. So now that we know we are not to lean on our own understanding, let us hear what the Lord says about tithing, because we know that his advice will stand. Deuteronomy 14, 20, 22 to 24 I'm sorry, 22 to 23 says, you must set aside a tithe of your crops. One-tenth of all crops you harvest each year. Bring this tithe to the designated place of worship, the gift. Let me say it again. Bring this tithe to the designated place of worship, the gift, the place that the Lord, your God, chooses for his name to be honored and eat there in his presence. When we adhere to the word of the Lord, we demonstrate our obedience to God, as well as showing him our desire to please him. And when we please God, all other things are given unto us. Now I'm going to tell my tithing story, but keep in mind, Proverbs 19 says, many are the plans, many plans are in a person's heart. I purchased a van in, in October of 2023, but this was not my plan. My plan was to hold on to the van we had until the wheels rolled off, uh, <laughs> until the spring. But when God opens the door, you move. The VA had originally told us that we could only pay for the ingress and egress once, once, because Delano was not service connected. So the second van that we purchased, we paid for it ourselves outright. Stay with me, watch God work. So the physical therapist that works with Delano was recently given the job of purchasing vans and preparing vets to drive. So Delano told him that we needed a van. So he encouraged us to try to see if the VA would pay for the ingress and egress. 
So we filled out the paperwork and needless to say, God moved and doors opened. Please know that the ingress and egress on most handicapped vehicles range from $45,000 to $50,000 on top of the cost of the van. So not only did we get a brand new van with no miles, thank God, we got a payment under $600, thank God, and we got $1,000 in cash back. I know you may have heard this testimony before, but today I'm not testifying to the things that we received, but I am testifying to the adherence of God's word. Even when we are apprehensive and being able to eat in the presence of God. So as you pay your tithes and offerings and give to secure the gift, depend not on your own understanding but seek to do his will in all you do, and he will show you what path to take. Now, of an, uh, above our tithes, we have been tasked with our securing the gift. Now, when we first started on this road, I was somewhat apprehensive because I was op operating in my thought and process. But then God brought back to remembrance the purchase of this van and how apprehensive I was, but how he worked it out in my favor. So I stand here today to say, I made the decision to be a citizen. So I've paid my thousand dollars, but I'm hoping that the Lord will bless me with more so that I can become a stakeholder in God's kingdom. So don't be apprehensive about your money because it's only money. And God is asking us to give back when he is so freely given to us. So what is the problem? I don't understand. But I understand that God is faithful. And we have been talking about his favor and he has favored us, Gift Nation, in more ways than one. So let's do what we are called to do. Let our faith work for us. So as you pay your tithes and offerings, like I said, don't depend on your own understanding, but seek to do his will in all that you do, and he will show you what path to take. So, what the Lord has even done for us, he's given us options on how to give. See, see how to work? The Lord work it out for you. You might not be able to use Cash App, but you can use Zelle. You might not be able to use Zelle, but you can use Givelify. You might not be able to use that, and you can use Pushpay. So you got options. You got ways and means to meet the Lord. Hello? So the divine leadership of the gift would like to thank you in advance for believing and standing on the word of God as we secure the gift. Now join us as we pray our prayer of faith and decree. Gracious and loving God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I give you praise for the gift of my life and this moment of worship through giving. My heart rejoices as I pay my tithe and give offerings this day. My tithe is evidence of the trust covenant I have with you, and my offerings demonstrate my faith in you to open the windows of heaven and cause perpetual increase and overflow in every area of my life. You promise that while the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. You are Jehovah Jireh, and you have given seed into my hands, and I manage it according to the mandates of your word.
and expect to see the uncompromised manifestation of your promises. Thank you for your supernatural timing and divine defense for my family, this ministry, and me. I am a blessing in the life of my bishop, the man that you have given to feed me with knowledge and understanding, as well as those who he entrusts to share in that responsibility. I am a blessing to those less fortunate than me. I am a stakeholder in the establishment of your kingdom. As such, my personal growth, achievements, and advancements are relentless to your glory and our honor. Thank you that you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I commit my way to you, O Lord, trust in you and delight that you bring to fulfillment all that you have promised. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray in faith. Amen. living in us. Come on, breathe in and out. He's our Savior. Hallelujah. He's breathing in us. He lives in us. So we've come to just declare that he is alive. We don't just wait till one Sunday out of the year to declare that the Lord is alive. He is alive. Look at somebody say, he's alive because he lives in me. Hallelujah. And we celebrate him. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands like this. Come on. The lamb that was slain, he's alive. Forever he shall reign, he's alive. They crucified him at Calvary, but he rose in victory. Say he's alive, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power in his hand, Jesus is alive. He's 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 alive. With all power in his hand. Come on, say the lamb, the lamb that was slain. He's alive. Forever he shall reign. He's alive. Oh, they crucified him. At Calvary, Calvary, but he rose. He rose Come on, let's celebrate. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Oh, with all power in his hand. Jesus is alive. He's alive. Come on, say, He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power. Let's 
sing it again. Oh, the lamb that was slain, he's alive. Forever he shall reign. He's alive. They crucified him at Calvary. But he rose in victory. Say, he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive today. Oh, with all power. Oh, he's alive. Jesus is alive. He's alive. Oh, with all power. Come on, declare it. He's alive. Our Savior is alive. He's alive. Oh, with all power. One more time. He's alive. Jesus is alive. He's alive. He's alive. Oh, sing this with authority. Oh, say heroes in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies and he put them under my feet. He rose in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies and he put them under my heroes in glory with all power and authority he conquered my enemies and he put them under my feet he's alive he's alive jesus is alive he is alive with all power i'm so glad that he's alive Jesus is alive. alive. He is alive. alive. Oh, with all power, man. Oh, the heroes in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies and he put them under my feet. Yes, the heroes in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies. He put them. Oh, everybody say heroes in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies and he put them. Oh, heroes in glory with all power and authority. He conquered my enemies. Oh, he's alive. he's alive. Jesus is alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. With all power. power. I'm so glad that he's alive. He's alive. Jesus is. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Oh, with all power. In. Yes, he has all power. Heroes. In glory with all power and authority, he conquered all of my enemies and he put them. Oh, he rose in glory, all power and authority, he conquered my enemies, he put them. He's alive. I'm so glad that he's alive. Hallelujah. Yes, he's alive. Glory's by him. Come on, let's wave at him with all power. He's alive. Glory to God. I'm so glad that he lives. In him I live and move and have my being. That makes him the great God. That makes him the great God. That makes him the great God. Because if you say a great God, that means somebody else is great like him. But he rose in victory. And I'm so glad that I can walk in victory. If you feel defeated, come on, just lift your hands. If you feel defeated, you can't have the victory today. 
because Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. He conquered my enemies. Hallelujah. They didn't overwhelm me. They didn't overtake me. Hallelujah. I don't even know who my enemies are, but he conquered them. Hallelujah. The adversary can't take over us unless God permits it. Come on, just thank him for another day, another breath, another opportunity. We've come here with purpose. I just didn't come to sit over there and look at you. I came to give him glory. Hallelujah. I came to give him glory. Hallelujah. Because I know who my Savior is. Hallelujah. And he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, slip your hands up and tell him thank you very much. Hallelujah. Come on, let's slip your hands and thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was telling Deacon on the way here this morning how so much is going on all over the world. You can't even go to the mall, even in America and Russia. They were doing something in Russia. Just somebody went off in Russia, just started stabbing people. And little girl got shot yesterday. But we're here. What did I do so good? What did I do so I don't go to the mall. I order online. But it doesn't matter. People breaking in houses. Tragedies are commonplace. Whoever wrote that song knew that tragedies, it's common to see a tragedy. But as for me, what you going to say? Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. I'm not a statistic this morning. Hallelujah. My family as well. Hallelujah. And we give him glory. Hallelujah. I didn't have to sleep under the bridge last night. I didn't have to sleep in a tent. Hallelujah. And I thank him. I know sometimes we take that for granted because that's what God is supposed to do. Take care of us. But anything can happen at any time. Hallelujah. We don't know how we're going to leave here. But while I'm here, the rumor about me is I'm going to praise him. That's what you want to say. You want to say something about me? Say, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. Look at somebody and say, you might have heard some stuff about me. You might have heard some stuff about me. But one thing you can say that is true, I'm going to praise him. Right in the middle of it. Hallelujah. In the midst of it, he's still worthy to be praised. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing. How great is our God. Come on, lift your hands and tell him. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing. How great is our God. Come on, let's declare it. How great, how great is our God. Sing, sing with me. How great is our God. All will see. How great is our God. Yeah. Come on, sing it again. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me, is our God, all will see, everybody ought to see, how great, come on one more time, come on put your hands on it, declare, how great, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, all will see, how great is our God. Come on, you're the name above. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing. How great is our God. Come on, sing it again. You're the name above, you're the name above all names. You are worthy, yeah. You are worthy of and my heart will sing. How great is our God. Come 
is our God. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Oh, how great thou art. How great thou art. You're the name above all names. Say, you're the name above all names. You are worthy, you are worthy of all praise. And our hearts will sing. How great is our God. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of our praise. And our hearts will sing, how great is our God. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater. Nobody greater, nobody greater. Your name is above all names. Your name is above all names. You're worthy of all our praise. Come on, declare it. Mighty are the words of your hand. 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 Oh, your name is above all. Great is our God. Woo! 
How great. How great. Mm. <laughs> oh, our God is great. Our God is great. Oh, our God is great. Whew. Good morning, everyone. First, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life. Giving honor to our bishop and co-pastor in their absence. Because he could have called anyone. He could have called anyone. But I thank God that God put me on his mind. Good morning to those of you that are watching us online and welcome and welcome. Our scripture has already been read by Deacon Kevin Underdue, but I will reread it again. It's Ephesians 1 verses 9 through 12. Again, Ephesians 1 verses 9 through 12. If you have it, say I have it. If not, say hold up. Oh, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> That's beginning the reading of God's word. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the time reached their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth. Father, thank you for this opportunity to come together and worship you, God, to give your name glory, honor, and praise. Now, God, I ask that you would open our hearts and our minds to the message for us today. God, I ask that you would allow us to crave your spirit so that we can hear from you. And God, remove Trina stand up in me and do what you have purpose for me to do in this preaching moment. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning, my brothers and sisters, for the time that is mine, I will preach from living life with purpose on purpose. Living life with purpose, on purpose. Just to let you know, one of Satan's most powerful lies is to tell you and me that God does not or no longer has a purpose for your life or mine. Or that you and I cannot know that purpose. You and I are here by chance and our existence is random. You see, the truth is, until you and I find our God-given purpose, our lives tend to become the agenda. But when you discover God's purpose for your life, we find something that is greater than and for. I am willing to give, spend, or live my life Instead of living, the, living in the frustration and the futility of a driven life, I am released into the fulfillment and rewards of, and the rewards of life, and the rewards called life, excuse me. Thomas Carlyle wrote, a man without purpose is like a ship without a rudder. And these days, there is an abundance of pop-up self-help seminars on the internet, all kinds of gurus everywhere flooding the internet 
selling their secret formulas and magic juices for a more successful and more fulfilling existence. And there is, of course, no shortage of needy and sometimes very successful people in the market willing to part with their hard-earned money to gain the insights of this items, these items being pushed. The reason this is happening in the world is because of self-seeking fulfillment in the life is most and is becoming a universal phenom. And the primary problem stems from the fact that everybody knows when they were born, but do they know why they were born? And so they are searching for a meaning, searching for a purpose in life. This morning, last night, you set your alarm clock before you went to bed. The alarm went off this morning. Told you what time to wake up but it could not tell you why it told you to wake up. <laughs> if I were to take a poll in this room, the hands of many would go as the question would be, has God, have you found your purpose in God's life? Have you found your purpose in God? Most hands would raise. Yet, if I ask that same question, if you found your God-given purpose noticeably, some hands would kind of dwindle away. Most people are living life without knowing what their purpose is, but nevertheless, they yearn to live meaningful lives. Everything has a purpose. Everything God created, he created on purpose, with purpose. Purpose precedes creation. Everything in life begins and ends with purpose. Colossians 1, 16, the B portion says, everything God started in him and finds its purpose in him. So, what is your purpose? The reason you and I were created was for the pleasure of God. We were created to bring him glory. The Bible says in Revelations 4 11, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things by your will. They were created and have their beings. God decided to create something that would give him pleasure, that would satisfy him deep inside. And do you know what that was, my fellow believers, on this morning? Hmm. That was you. God decided that he was going to create. Everything has a purpose. And our primary purpose is the pleasure of God. See, you and I were made, and God made us, not vice versa. And the life is about letting God use you for his purpose. God is not wild by you and me. He has done better than that. Jesus Christ receipt. God is not impressed with what we do, how well we are educated. God already did that stuff. Again, <laughs> receipts. God is not staggered by how fast you can run because I know for some, we're probably not going to get but so far, but for the others, God is not impressed. God is not taken with how often you and I can read our Bibles, can say a prayer, Right. Come on now. <laughs> God is not impressed. <laughs> but if you really want to grab God's attention, if you want to bless God's heart, if you really want to get it going with God, love him with all you have. That will do his heart 
glad because we were created for such. If you want to recognize that in him, we live, we move, and have our being. Remember, everything has a purpose. With that being said, your purpose and my purpose makes us unique. Your purpose and my purpose is different from the person to your left and to your right. See, we were not a divine experiment. We were not a divine experiment. See, God did not make you to see what he could possibly do with you when you were born. See, Isaiah tells us, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things which have not been done saying, my purpose will be established and I will accomplish my good pleasure. There's your receipts. We are not divine experiment. Before you and I were created, God had already had the end in mind. God already knew. God did not start with creation. God started with purpose. He designed you to be uniquely and specifically for that purpose. See, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Uh, see, your mere experience, existence, is evidence that this world need something that only you and I can offer. In other words, your purpose is the uniqueness and the value that you bring to this world. KJ, you know that. Your purpose is to get the do done. You do it well. Miss Sybil, you know what to do. You watch those kids. That's your purpose. That's your purpose. Ephesians 1 and 4, long before he laid down earth's foundations, God had us in mind and settled on us as the focus of his love to make us whole and holy by his love. Early I said, everything has a purpose. That's going to be the constant thing, just so you know. Your purpose makes you unique. Your purpose then is the key to fulfillment. When we embrace our God-given purpose, we unleash our God-given potential to turn God's purpose into our passion. I'm not sure what your passion is, but I do know once you tap into it, God is going to meet you right there. There is nothing more satisfying than to know what we are meant to be doing. Commit ourselves faithfully. Did you hear what I said? Commit ourselves faithfully. Have you figured out your purpose? Once you figured out your purpose, turn it into passion. And watch what God does. If Deacon Michelle Hall Davis was here, I would tell her, keep on keeping on, because your passion is about to pay off. We will never be truly satisfied if we are not sure what we are meant to be doing. Best-selling author Miles Monroe said it like this, that the greater tragedy is not death, but life without purpose. The, great, the greater tragedy is not the unfortunate and untimely death. As terrible as that is, of a loved one in the accident. It is the millions upon millions who die every year having squandered their potential and their purpose by doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> Life is not simply lost by dying. Life is lost minute by minute, day by day, in all the thousands of ways in which men and women live their lives without purpose. You talk about life be lifing. Hmm. <laughs> it, 
And everything, purpose, is the key to fulfillment. John 10, 10, 10, B portion states, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Do you want to be fulfilled in tragedy? Find your purpose. Do you want to be fulfilled in need? Find purpose. Do you want to be fulfilled in cancer? Find your purpose. Do you want to be fulfilled in the loss of a loved one? Find your purpose. Don't squander your troubles and your trials and your tragedies. Find your purpose. Why? Because in purpose, your pain and my pain meets God's provision. Remember, everything has a purpose. Your purpose makes you unique. Your purpose is the key to fulfillment. And how many of you know that when the Father in heaven says to the Son, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased, it meant that time Jesus was fulfilling his purpose. <laughs> when Jesus said, it is finished, he was speaking about purpose. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you have given me to do. How many of you know God will accomplish his purpose in you? For the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, and it assures us of this purpose. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called to what? His purpose. <laughs> but, 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 let me caution you right here as a believer. I want, you to, I want to show you something that the devil still does not understand God. If you get this, you will always be one step ahead of the devil. Nothing the devil does can stop the purpose of God for your life and for mine. God always has a backup plan. God had a backup plan in the Garden of Eden. God had a backup plan when Joseph was sold into slavery. God had a backup plan when Israel was taken into captivity. God even had a backup plan when Jesus died on the cross because he sits at the right hand of the Father this very day. Now, if God had a backup plan for those aforementioned, what makes you think he doesn't have a plan for you? What makes you think he don't have a plan for you? He will always have a plan no matter what. Even when we mess up, even when our mistakes and our failures, God will use those experiences to become part of your backup plan. And why is that? Because our God is sovereign, his purpose for our lives. Paul may had an inkling when he boldly proclaimed this. For I am confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work and you, he who has begun a good work in me, shall bring it to completion. Paul is speaking about purpose. As believers, we need to stop fretting over the small things. Why? Because God will fulfill purpose and in you and through you because God loves you. And God is for us. God is never troubled by your past or mine. But he is very excited about our futures. But you and I cannot walk in the richness and righteousness of our purpose while we are tied to the pain and failures of our past. When your past decides it wants to take, take you down memory lane, Drop them off at the next corner. 
let it go and forgive yourself and give yourself time to embrace God's purpose for your life. I have given you four points about purpose so far. Everything has a purpose. Your purpose makes you unique. Purpose is the key to fulfillment and God will accomplish his purpose. So where do we go from here? Glad you asked. If you and I must now choose, live with purpose, live life with purpose, on purpose. You don't find your purpose, you learn it as you go. You don't find your purpose, you learn it as you go. Now, let me say this, don't confuse purpose with destiny. Your destiny is what happens at the end of your journey. Your purpose is about the journey. Let me say that again. Don't confuse purpose with destiny. Your destiny is what happens at the end of your journey. Your purpose is all about the journey. Your destiny is that you will rule and reign as perfect saints and glory in the presence of the father your purpose is that you do what you do as a child of god if we're going to choose to live with purpose live life on purpose we must first affirm our identity the journey of our purpose begins with this question what was in the mind of the maker when he created you and me? See, God had a need to fill when your name and my name came to mind. Great care was taken to choose the individual components of our design. He carefully mixed the heart, our motivations, and our temperament. Yes, our temperament because there's only one Trina Rawls. With a unique set of talents and gifts, he allowed life experiences to shape our passions, exercise our strengths, and direct our steps. For I am God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand before I was born should I so that I could walk in them affirm who you are in the eyes of the one who created you for your purpose in the first place once you make this shift you will begin to see how much thought and love went into designing not only the life itself but also your unique place. Here's that scripture again, Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. He plans to prosper each of us. Our plans, his plans are giving us a hope in the future. If we're going to choose to live purpose on purpose, we must commit to faithfulness. Fulfill your purpose is not so much about what you and I do as it is about how we do it. We do not need to do things to fulfill our purpose, great things to fulfill our purpose, but we can just do those little things and be faithful in those little things. If you want to fulfill your purpose, whatever it is that you are doing, do it with all your heart and your soul and your mind. If you are a stay-at-home mom, give it your absolute best. If you are a teacher, give it your absolute best. If you are a caregiver, Michelle, give it your absolute best. If you are on the road, do it with all your heart. Why? Because God's purpose for you is to do what you are doing now with all your heart. 
And if you do not like what you do, where you live, what you get paid, if you do not like any of anything about it, change it. But before you change it, make sure you seek God first. Before you change it, make sure you seek God first. Make sure that he has sanctioned your transition from one place to the next. God will grow you for it if he sanctions it. Whatever your hands finds to do, do it faithfully and you know how in that you will find purpose and fulfillment. If you are going to choose to live purpose, live life with purpose on purpose, we must upgrade to ministry. What you mean by upgrade to ministry? If you want to fulfill your purpose, do what you do with a heart for ministry. God has given you and me gifts and talents were given to help you and me accomplish our purpose. How do you do that as ministry? Well, do whatever, do whatever you do as unto the Lord. Do whatever you do as unto the Lord. Ask God to show you how to use your gifts and talents. Ask him and he will show you. In the Old Testament, Joseph's fame never brought him to a great ministry or raised the dead, or nor did he preach to a single congregation. But he did what he did with all his heart unto the Lord. He used his God-given gifts and talents as he ministered in the supernatural, where he was a servant in the house, a captive in prison, or where he was a working as into the into the pagan government in a foreign land. That is what you call ministry. Do it to the best of your ability unto the Lord. If you're going to choose to live with purpose on purpose, we must expand our territory. As you are faithful, Ask God to expand your territory. As you faithfully minister where you are, and as you will fulfill the purpose by simply doing what you do faithfully. And then God, who ordains you for the good works, will grow you from strength to strength, grace to grace, glory to glory. So as we come to our conclusion, remember your purpose is not an accident and choosing to walk in your purpose is not an accident. It is a choice you make to be faithful. Instead of looking for some grand purpose, find his purpose in the ways you do what you are doing right now. Remember, faith and God's promise precedes miracles of God's provision in your life and mine. If you are here today or if you are online and you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I ask that if you're online that you will put it in, com in the comments that you would like to be, you would like to receive the right hand of fellowship. I'm sorry, that you would like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're here in the sanctuary, we ask that you would close your eyes 
and repeat these words, but believe in your heart. Father, we come to you today asking that you would forgive us, that you, that we know that you have died for us on the cross. And we know, God, that you was raised on the third day. Now, God, I ask that you would come into my heart, be Lord and Savior of my life. Father, help me to live life with purpose on purpose. Now, God, I ask that you would forgive me of all my sins that I have committed. And God, I ask that you would be Lord and Savior of my life. And God, we ask this in Jesus' precious name, I do pray. Amen. And if you would like to join us virtually or in person, just go to jointhegift.org. It should be crawling across your screen right now. Uh, you can put your name in the comment box and somebody from our ministry team will get back to you within 48 hours. So we have come to serve, we come to worship, now let's, let us leave to serve. <sighs> hmm. Give me one second. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Remember, you are the gift. Yes, you are the gift. Yes, you are the gift. And we are the Gift Nation.